morning, everybody. Have a seat. Good morning. It's great to be together. Great to have you. Can you guys all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A little loud. Should I back away? <laughs> Louder. All right. Okay. Here I am. Canela, can you hear me? All right. Canela can hear me. All right. Val, can you hear me? No, okay. We're good. We're good. Yeah, you a little up, okay. There you go. All right. So we were um, on a project helping a little village that had been devastated by uh, basically a, a tidal wave just wiped out their little village. And, you know, several hundred people, not a big village, just a little village, and wiped out most everybody's homes little store and it was a really really tough situation where people could have starved people were suffering and so we sent a group of christians in to help out to help rebuild the village and we made some micro loans to help the little stores and the little businesses get back on their feet and we had some brothers and sisters that have experience that could just help them figure out how do we get your business back up and running again in the midst of this. Within a year, the village was rebuilt and it was thriving and, and actually even doing better than before the disaster. And people were sharing about that, you know. And it was incredible the impact that it was only about 25 Christians. It wasn't a lot of people. But the difference that they made was incredible and there was one person uh this village was in a country that practices a different religion not christian in fact very hostile to christians and some of the local religious leaders were very suspicious of the christians coming in thinking that maybe this was either a front for a church that just was trying to change all the religion or even worse that it was a front for the cia and oftentimes we had to prove to people that we are not a front for the CIA because unfortunately sometimes the CIA goes in under the guise of a nonprofit charity group. Amen. So we had to prove to them and this was with Hope Worldwide. And and um, what we didn't know was that the local religious leaders had put a spy in our group. Because we had local volunteers. And this spy was trained in building bombs. And he was going to blow us up. That was his plan. He was going to come in and at one of our gatherings he was going to blow it up and kill all the Christians. And so, but he was immediately impacted by the fellowship. And he made friends and he was loving it and he was having a great time and was and, and blown away by Jesus and why they were all there and they were they were Christians from all over. There were some from Asia, some from Africa, some from the United States, and 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 they all had gathered as a volunteer corps to just help out. He was so blown away. He wanted. He started asking questions about Jesus, and and he wanted to learn about Jesus. Long story short, he studied the Bible, got baptized, and is your brother today, and works for Hope Worldwide. <laughs> as one of the local uh, organizers. But it was so amazing, I got to talk to him and I asked him, what, what, what changed you from coming in full of hatred? I mean, it takes a lot of hatred to want to kill a bunch of people, right? I mean, that's just, you, you've got to have a lot of hate in your heart. And he said, what really changed me was the love I saw in the group. He said, I saw the love between how you guys treated each other. And I saw the love that here you were serving and loving my people who are a different people and even a different religion. And he said, I've never seen love like that. That changed my heart. It melted a heart, his heart. And, it, and, and you know, I think of the words that, that, that Martin Luther King said once that, Hate cannot drive out hate. 
Only love can do that, right? Like darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only the light can do that. But what Jesus said was, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. In this brother's life, that's what happened to him. He saw the light. He was impacted by the salt. And this was Jesus' words. Actually, the sermon today was going to be, you are the light of the world. But Casey went and taught that on Wednesday night. He did a great job. It was a great class. And I was like, well, there goes my sermon. I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll focus on the first part, the salt. So you are the salt of the earth. Amen? Amen. Jesus told the disciples, and not just the disciples, because this was the Sermon on the Mount. He told the crowd. They weren't even all disciples. He said, you are the salt of the earth. That's a pretty powerful statement. And I know I'm not saying anything new. I'm not preaching anything new. You've all heard this before, and probably a lot of you have led Bible talks on this. We know those were Jesus' words. Now, he does say something interesting at the end. He says, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Now, this is going to be a little bit of an interactive sermon. I'm going to ask you some questions. Let me give you some background on salt in case you're a new Christian or you're visiting and you haven't heard all this stuff. Most of you guys know all this. What is the value and the importance of salt? Well, first of all, it's a preservative, right? We all know that. It's how you preserve meat. It's how they use to preserve fish. They would pack it in salt. And meat that's packed in salt, and obviously for thousands of years, they didn't have refrigerators. So the meat would only last a couple of days unless you packed it in salt or fish. You know, I mean, all of this stuff starts to be pretty stinky after a couple of days if it's not packed in salt, right? I remember uh, a couple of years ago, we had a power outage. And right away, we were thinking, okay, what are we going to do with all the meat in the freezer, you know? If it doesn't come back on, we're going to have a big neighborhood barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> and because, you know, it was packed. So salt was incredibly important because it preserved the food it preserved the meat it preserved the fish and that's basically the protein people relied on was the meat and the fish so it was pretty significant right you guys know that already it was an enhancer right you ever go eat something and they forgot to salt it and it's just kind of plain it's kind of bland and you're thinking man if I had a salt shaker it would be so much better right and we, it's true right if you make mashed potatoes and you forget to put salt it's just mush put some salt on that it opens up all your little taste buds and, and your mouth is happy and it's like yeah it just opens up all those taste buds and you capture all the flavors and so we love salt some of us love it a little too much <laughs> gotta limit it right but Doug will tell you, you got to have to lower your salt intake, bro. But it makes difference. It changes things, right? It is, in fact, a change agent. Anything you add salt to, it's going to change everything it comes in contact with. Now, so salt was very valuable in the first century for thousands of years. It was incredibly valuable. In fact, what you may not know is that the word salary literally in Latin means salty. Because the word the way that soldiers were sometimes paid, you probably heard this one already, yeah. was with a bag of salt. 
the Roman soldiers. Part of their pay was salt because it was so valuable. So if you say salt in Spanish, how do you say salt in Spanish? Sal, sal right? Root word of salary, sal. And, uh, or in Latin, salarium. And so that was the word that we got for salary. That's how you got paid because it was valuable. It was something that was a precious commodity. Now let me ask you this. And here's my first question. So what did he mean when he said you were the salt of the earth? What did he mean by that? How are you the salt of the earth? Let's apply it here. What's that? Value. We bring value. We bring something very important, very precious, wherever we go. What else? Yes. We preserve things. We preserve the scriptures. We preserve the faith. We preserve theology or understanding or knowledge of God. We hang on to that. I'm repeating them for the listeners. Yes. Yeah, I think me personally, whenever I come into contact with people, I can change the course and make their day better. I have the ability to change the course and make their day worse. We have impact. Amen. We have impact. The knowledge we have, what we know, who we know, what we know. It can totally change someone's life. It changed our life, right? Yeah. So we are absolutely a change agent. Just from what we know, what we've been taught. What else? How else are we the salt of the earth? Yes. We what? We activate, right? We activate. Like salt activates your tongue, your little taste buds. We activate people. We get we help people become aware. We help people know the truth. We help people understand things in the scripture. I mean, for most of us, think about when you first started reading the Bible, it was all confusing. And when you probably started in the book of Revelation and then really got lost. <laughs> and you still called it Revelations. Then you learned that there's no S at the end. It's Revelation, right? Nobody makes that mistake anymore. Sorry, pet peeve there. I had to correct. <laughs> There's different kinds of salt. Yeah. Yeah. At, at, at our house, we got like four or five different kinds of salt. We got pink salt. We got white salt. We got rock salt. We got, and depending on which one you use, it has a different flavor. It actually changes the flavor differently. Okay. We're the light. You're jumping subjects on me, but I'll take it. We're the light. Yes, we're the light. I'm in the salt still. Yes. Okay, the salt balances, right? What is it? What is it balance? Is it sour or is it what is it? Sugar? What does it balance? Sugar. Okay. So we bring balance. Some of you are just too sweet. We got to tone you down. <laughs> just kidding. Wrong analogy. Wrong application. No, it does balance things. It does. It does. Some things are too. You know. That's why people love chip. You know, sweet and salty mixtures are really popular, right? Sweet and salty chips and snacks. Everybody eats them. Any other thoughts? Of what is, how are we the salt of the earth? The salt of the earth. Yes. Enhances our lives with meaning and purpose. Okay. Our life is enhanced. It's richer. It's fuller. It's more robust. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life in abundance or to the full depending on which translation you have or life to the full like as it should be the what we would call the good life what we would call <coughs> la, la vida pura or pura vida what we would call great life or living the dream I'm living the dream bro that's what he talks about Mr. Flowers. Yeah, that's one was we didn't thought about that one. It has healing properties, right? It has healing property properties. 
There you go, come on, USC. One point for Gryffindor. <laughs> Has healing properties. See, now you now you know now you feel good about paying those student loans. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We bring the gift. We bring something. Wherever you go, it's not just you. What you've learned, what you've grown in, what you've understood is so incredibly valuable. And, it, and notice he says, nobody lights a lamp, and I'm jumping to the light here, and puts a bowl over it, right? Your gift is not to be hidden. You uncover it, and it says... First, it gives light to the house. So where should our impact be first? At home. Yes. Your marriage. Yes. Can I say that one again? Your marriage. Yes. Your roommate situation. Yes. Your family. Yes. Your kids. Yes. Your parents. That's where this should first have impact, right? Yes. And then to the church. Your spiritual family. And then... To the community or the world because he said you are the light of your house only no the world right that's our calling there was another hand up here somewhere okay uh, we, use salt, uh, we use salt to clean what collard greens. collard greens all right come on now we're getting real practical Cleaning, yeah. I use salt when I clean my pie pan. All right. I throw salt on there and scrub away. Yeah, that's good. That's another one. Another part. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> well, you just you're just loaded today. Tell me. Whoa. Okay, we're getting scientific now. It's got most of the minerals. And electrolytes. Okay, Doug? Oh! Okay, it unfreezes the ice. Ice is dangerous, right? I mean, it's an enemy to old people. You know, we're like, we got to be careful with the ice. We, we fall down, we don't get up. So we need ice, right? Joanne? Didn't know that one. Wow. It's a catalyst. It speeds up. Man, we are learning all kinds of things. It's a catalyst. It speeds up the boiling process. Wow. See, you learn something every day, right? Yeah. All right, Santiago. Go ahead, Freddy. It makes ice cream. Wow. See, you can be sweet. Okay. Oh, we got one here. What'd you say? Oh, puts you in different moods. Nice, nice. We're just learning all kinds of stuff here. Okay, you put Epsom salts in a bath. That's part of that healing process, right? I mean, there's just wow. There's all kinds of stuff. I just learned all kinds of things. I gotta add, write that down. Purification. <laughs> salt in a wound. Oh, it hurts, but it speeds up the healing. I, I went. Our group went to go swimming in the Dead Sea, and they warned us: if anybody's got any cuts, don't do it, because you'll be screaming in pain when you jump in the Dead Sea. But people fly from all over the world to swim in the Dead Sea because of the salt and minerals that are in it. It's supposed to have incredible healing properties.
Yeah. God put, gives it to us in abundance, in abundance. Okay, I think it's going to get really loud here in a few minutes, so I got to hurry up. Okay, so let me just summarize what we're talking about. So it's a preservative, you know, it preserves the truth, the love, the faith, the humility of being Christians, of all that is good. It uh, Now Jesus said, what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? How does somebody lose? Well, first let me identify it. How do we, let's get real practical, how do we have the impact like salt? How are we change agents? Discipleship. Let me ask you that. Let me sh change the question a little bit. You're going to have to get really loud here for a few minutes. Who or how have you been impacted by people? Who's been salt in your life? Or how did they? Now, I'm not, this is not a, I want to share about my cousin and brother. So this is a, this happened to me. This is how I was impacted. Okay, you were impacted by somebody just teaching you about the Bible and Jesus. Now, were they a doctorate in theology? Nope. Were they? Did they have a master's in biblical interpretation? Nope. Was it a normal person? More or less. Okay, great. See, just opening your Bible and sharing Scripture has an impact and changes everybody. Yes. Someone just speaking the truth to you yeah. in love. Yeah. In love. That's better than in anger yeah. or in frustration or in criticalness or in negativity. Right? I mean, we'll accept it if it's negative and critical, but it's sure a whole lot nicer if it's in love. Right? Okay. How else have we been in, do we get impacted? Okay. So James talked about the impact of seeing all the diversity of people and their love. They weren't even necessarily doing anything to James, just their example, right? Our example is impacting. First 20 years of being a Christian. You know how many people became Christians in our family? Zero. The next 20 years, the last 20 years, 13 people in our family became Christian. One of them, we didn't even have any connection to. Somebody else in the church met them. So it's just setting an example. Sometimes people don't want to hear your words, but they can't ignore your example. Amen. gave up their home to let sisters live in their home and they trained us to have discipleship within a home that to communicate to have weekly meetings so that we can get all everything that's been you know, stuffed in out and we can resolve and have peace and shalom in our home yeah. Amen. there you go someone else's sacrifice an act of love a gift totally impacted them Music has a huge impact on us. It softens our hearts. It opens our minds. It, it plants the word of God, especially when the music involves scripture. Yeah. It really, it works on us. And we don't even, you know, we just say, oh, it's just music. No, it's working on you. Yeah. God's working on you. And we all know there's something really deeply powerful about worship, yeah. about singing. Yeah. We 
Yeah. Just sharing life together. Sharing life, growing older together, going through the stages of life together, suffering together, encouraging, celebrating together, being together. There's something incredibly powerful. I mean, I've shared it before. There is literally an epidemic of loneliness in our country. There's an epidemic of depression and people feeling all alone. And millions of people don't know how to build friendships anymore. They don't because they grew up without a community. Their families weren't close. They didn't go to church. And they weren't part of anything beyond maybe sports. But even that was only for a season or for one day of the week. And so they don't know how to be part of a community. How to build relationships. How to build family. And that is so impacting. You know, I remember when I became a Christian, and we used to have church in the morning and church in the evening on Sundays, and we had to drive up to a little town called Poway, which was about a half hour away from where we all, all the students lived. And so rather than driving back and forth, we would stay after church and we'd go to the family's houses. The families of the church would invite all the students over for lunch. And I remember being blown away. I sat at a table and we all prayed and had lunch. I'd never done that before. I was so blown away by that. And I remember, I mean, I was like two weeks old as a Christian. And I thought, I want this. This is what I want. My family literally sat at a table one day a year, Thanksgiving. That was it. And we never ate together. Everybody ate whenever they were free. And just that being together is so incredibly important. And we think, you know, all these things that we're sharing, these are great things. How hard are they to do? Not really. To serve, to give, to sacrifice, to share, to be together. Is, is, do you need a degree for that? Do you need special training for that? Do you need a lot of experience and time to do that? No. Anybody can do these things. So when Jesus says, what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? What does that mean? What does that mean? We stop being that. We stop being that. We're not having impact anymore. We're not making a difference anymore. When salt loses its saltiness, the Christian who's no longer having impact. They're not preserving faith. They're not preserving love. They're not preserving truth. You know, what does that look like? When you don't preserve love, you're negative. You're 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 fearful. You're you're critical. You're 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 a bummer. You're just not. You're you're all caught up in yourself. Yeah. And you're not happy. You're not happy. I've never met an unhappy person who's very loving. <laughs> People who are very loving have lots of friends. They got too many friends. They're overcrowded. And and the truth is, sometimes it's not that we have a bad heart. We just don't know how to be a friend. And that's the great thing about this community is we learn how to love. Amen. And sometimes we're not even good at it. Somebody visits the church and nobody even says hi. Mm. Nobody reaches out. Nobody extends love. Or we just, we get out of shape. And what, we, we get out of spiritual shape. And what did Jesus say? What good is saltiness if it loses its saltiness? Well, Rob, what good is salt? What good is a Christian who has zero impact? Right. You say, well... What if I'm not super talented? You don't need to be talented. Right. What if I'm not super educated? You don't need to be educated. What if I don't know the Bible that well? You don't even need to know the Bible. You can love. Amen. You can Amen. serve. Amen. You can sacrifice. You can give. Sure. You can go by the stories. Most Christians for thousands of years never had Bibles. Only rich people had Bibles. But they knew to love. They knew to serve. They knew to give. Amen. They knew when we're having a potluck, I'm bringing something. Amen. They knew that when we're setting up a a, church, a park service, I'm going to set up stuff. I'm going to help. I'm going to clean up. I'm going to do yeah. something. Amen. Now, I know the brothers in charge of cleanup are like, yeah, preach it, bro. <laughs> clean up, clean up. Come on. We used to have a song we'd sing with our kids. Clean up, clean up. Everybody does their part. Clean up. You know, I forget. I think I said the words wrong already. I messed it up. My kids are in their 30s. I haven't sung that song in 25 years. Is it? Okay, that's probably where I, we learned it. But that's, it's, 
it's incredibly easy to have impact. Amen. Our heroes that we look up to, people like Nelson Mandela, like Gandhi, like Martin Luther King, they had impact Amen. because they loved in the face of hatred. Because they served when people were being mean and ugly in the world. Because they gave their lives when everybody else was just for me and myself. Because they practiced the teachings of Jesus. Amen. That gave them impact. So all of us can have impact. Yeah. And if you don't know how to love and you don't know how to give, ask somebody, help me. On, Watch people, imitate them. We have people right here that are incredibly loving. We have people right here that are incredibly impacting. And sometimes we just, we're just out of spiritual shape. Haven't been sacrificing. Haven't been loving. Haven't been serving. Haven't been giving. That's okay. Repent. Amen. Change right now. I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to close out. For the next five minutes, and then I'll call us back, get up and have an impact on somebody. Be salt to somebody. Okay, ready? Who, who's got a watch that can tell me when I got five minutes? Okay, Michelle's tell me. Five minutes. Be salt to somebody around you. Someone else. Okay. I gotta call everybody back. Spread five minutes up. How much? Okay, two minute warning. Two minute warning. Let's come on back. Come on back. Come on back, everybody. Okay, come on back. Okay, let me ask. Was that painful? No. Was that fun? Were you encouraged? It's good, isn't it? You know, come on back, come on back. When uh, I shared about this before, but in light of this message, I want to say it again. I went to a meeting at the United Nations when I was uh, leading Hope Worldwide. And I heard 100 presentations of how to fix the problems of the world. None of them were any good. And I walked away thinking, I know how. 
you inject Christians into any situation and they'll change it because I'd seen it happen in that village and in many other places in cities in homes in families in lives the difference that Christians can make not because they're so awesome but because Jesus is awesome because we learned from Jesus how to love how to serve how to preserve the truth in a world that doesn't even believe in truth how to preserve faith in a world that gives up and quits in any situation that starts to get tough how to keep loving even in hatred <laughs> somebody wants to preach <laughs> he's ready to preach how we learned was from Jesus' example. He impacted each of us because he loved, because he served, and he gave everything for you. Everything. No one has ever loved us more than Jesus. And that changed our lives. And if you're visiting, you need to get to know Jesus. He'll change your life too. He is the original light of the world. He is the original salt of the earth. I think all of us as Christians, we want to have this impact. Amen? Because he had that impact on us. What good is it if we lose our saltiness? It's worthless. It's just be thrown out and thrown away. We have the blessing of being saved. By Jesus. We all got saved when we believed, repented, and got baptized. But guess what? There's more to do. The world needs the light. The world needs the truth. So my question I leave you with is what difference are you going to make this week? What difference, what impact are you going to have at home? The world's depending on us. Understanding our role. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus did this for us. And now we'll take communion to remember that. But I want to encourage and inspire all of us. And I've been thinking a lot about this personally. What impact am I having in Los Angeles? What difference is our church making in this city? And I know we've had uh, we've had a couple of years of really focus on healing. And that has been good and right. We needed that. Amen? Amen. But it's not just about us. <laughs> We're also the salt of the earth, the light of the world. So let's go impact somebody. Let's go impact our families, our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, our friends, our roommates. Let's be the salt of the earth. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. God in heaven... As we take communion now, we thank you for Jesus who impacted us, who gave everything for us. Help us to be like him. Help us to love, to serve, to speak the truth in love, to give, and to make a difference, Father. Father, because you've given us everything we need to have impact as you've impacted us. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this incredible community that helps us to make a difference and to be different. We love you, God. We thank you for the bread. We thank you for the cup. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.